God is our strength and shield. God raises up leaders for every time and place. O oh God, let us pray. O oh God, in our time of worship and throughout the hours of our days, remain at the center of our thoughts and actions. Remind us that we belong. Renew the joy of our love for you and for our neighbors far and near. Make us advocates for others and for all that is good and true. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's good to see all of you, and welcome back, Phil and Jane. It's so nice to have you here today. Isn't it wonderful? Yay. Glad you're in town and could be with us. It's really a treat to see your faces today. Um, today, also, I just want to remind everyone, today is the day when Dorothy and Jack Saraceno will be renewing their vows here in our sanctuary at 2 o'clock. So congratulations on your 50th anniversary, and we're very happy for you. And actually, the altar flowers are in your honor today, and um, the lovely flowers given by Coralie for Celeste's birthday, and I uh, understand that daisies were at your wedding, so we've got a lot of daisies today. Um, so Dorothy and Jack do want to invite everybody to stay for the renewal of vows, if you can, or come back. Um, there's going to be the renewal here in the sanctuary, followed by a nice big party in the, in the uh, parlor with dancing and singing and sharing and lots of fun. So everybody's welcome. So thank you for your hospitality and, and inviting everyone. That's really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> plus, you get to meet more of their family. Jacqueline and Jack Richard are here. Yeah, <laughs> so good to see you today. Um, Let's see, Sunday School is asking for some donations, not of toys, but they said some child-sized chairs or simple cleaning supplies could be useful. So let Jessica know if you can help with that. Um, I want to remind everyone, we had a lot of people sign up for coffee hour at one point, and we were so happy to see all the spaces filled in. But I just want to remind everyone, when you sign up, immediately write yourself a little note. Um, either put it right in your calendar or take a prayer slip and write it on the back. Um, we will have Amanda call you during the week, but she was away this week. Um, and just to be extra sure, be sure to put it right in your calendar, because we've had a few times when people have signed up and forgotten um, because it was a while ago. So I just want to remind you to do that. Um, so uh, let's see, what else? World Communion Sunday is next week. And for those of you who haven't been to that, it's really a day when we focus on international ministry and we have international music by the choir. So that's always wonderful. Um, so please plan to come for that special service. The day before, we have someone from the Alzheimer's Association who will be giving an hour presentation on healthy bodies, healthy minds, and the connection between the two. And she promises to make it fun. It's for everyone. It's in our lower church parlor and just a great opportunity for fellowship and perhaps a little nudge in the direction of um, fitness and health and Alzheimer's prevention as best we can. Now, certainly we don't have complete control over that, but there are some things we can do to lower our risk. So that's what we're trying to teach about through that program. The trustees meeting listed in the calendar has been postponed, so please ignore that note. Um, it was for Tuesday, we are not meeting Tuesday. So, those are some of the announcements today, and I think that really is about it, unless anybody else has an announcement for us. If not, we will, oh, I do want to remind you that today is September 30th, so we will be reading the September birthdays and anniversaries after service. Carol Smith has brought a cake for us today, so we will celebrate with that um, after the service. Let's turn now and pass the peace of Christ to our neighbors. Cards or pictures. We used to have a great memory game. You turn on these little squares and they had pictures. And you had to remember where each one was because you're trying to match two of a kind. And where did I see that picture? It was a good memory game. Yeah. So try to remember at least one thing that you saw in the bag 
as you're passing along. <coughs> okay. All right. Huh. We really want to see what's at the bottom, hidden by the other things. Very seriously. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a lot in that bag, isn't there? It's full. So let's start saying what we saw. What did you see? A brush. A hairbrush. A toothbrush. A toothbrush. Brushing your teeth is healthy for your teeth. Which there is. That's why we have a toothbrush. That's why we have a toothbrush. Yes, it is. And flossing too. How many floss do you floss at home? <laughs> yeah. I don't always remember, but sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good thing to do too. But anyway, yes, a toothbrush is for your oral health, your mouth. What about the soap? That helps with health too, doesn't it? Yeah. So these health kits are things that we're going to be making as a congregation because we're going to be sending them to the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and the United Methodist Committee on Relief gives them to people who've had a natural disaster, like a hurricane, like flooding, right? Do you remember that they had that down in the Carolinas? So this is a good time to make them, and different members of the congregation are going to be in charge of different things, like one person will be the toothbrush person, and one person's gonna be the soap person, so don't be surprised, everybody, if someone comes up to you and asks you for one of those items. And you can be thinking, too, if there's a particular item that you want to bring in, you can talk to your parents and they can help you get some so that we can provide relief. Okay? So it's a very nice encouragement to people who might have had their house flooded and now they don't have a toothbrush. They don't have a washcloth. They need fresh supplies. It may not be a lot, but it's a little something to show that we care and everyone makes a difference. And we're not the only church making them, so if we all put them together, it becomes a lot, right? So it makes a difference. So let's say a prayer right now for those who are affected by hurricanes and flooding. Holy God, you are a God who cares about the most difficult times in our lives. And we know that you look with on all who have suffered from a hurricane. Thank you for many ways that we can show we care through our prayers, through things that we donate. And we pray for our health kit collection that we might generously provide many health kits to those in need. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Testament, Esther, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 to 10, chapter 8, verses 3 to 8. So the king and Haman went into a feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition, and the lives of my people. That is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed and to be killed and to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, the wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. The king rose from the feast and wrath and went into the garden. But Haman stayed to beg his life from Queen Esther, for he saw that the king had determined to destroy him. When the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman had thrown himself on the couch where Esther was reclining. And the king said, Will he ever even assault the queen in my presence, in my own house? As the, as the words left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that said Haman has prepared for Makodai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged, hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared. Then the anger of the king abated. Then Esther spoke again to the king. She fell at his feet, weeping and pleading with him to avert the evil design of Haman and the plot that he had devised against the Jews. The king held out the golden sphere, and Esther, and Esther rose and stood before the king. She said, if it pleases the king, and if I have won his favor, and if the thing seems right before the king, and I have his approval, let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha and the Agagite, which he wrote, giving orders to destroy the Jews who, were all in, who are in all the providences of the king. For how can I bear to see the calamity that is coming on my people? Or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? Then King Asherah said to Queen Esther and to the Jew Mokodai, See, I, give, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows, because he plotted to lay hands on the Jews. You, write at, you may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king, and seal it with the king's ring, for an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. The word of the Lord.
to do things that are difficult, and other times things that come naturally to us. We thank you, O oh God, for your spirit, which comes upon us or rises up within us and moves us to action. Be with us now as we reflect on Esther as an inspiration to us in our own walk with you. Amen. Well, I look out and I see Cliff and I say, oh, I, I wish Cliff were preaching on Esther today <laughs> because I'm sure you have so much to share with us about Esther. So see Cliff in the coffee hour for more information, right? I, I, I feel that through the years in, in Judaism, the, the Jewish people every year at Purim, they reenact the story of Esther. And I'm sure there's much preaching and teaching on Esther. So there's a lot we can learn. I just want to share, though, that I found it interesting. Once again, I've gone off the lectionary and picked figures from the Bible. And the fact that, that Esther was picked for this week just really boggles my mind because it is actually a story of a woman taking a courageous step to share about who she is, to share about her people, and to ask for justice for her people. And I couldn't help but, but be kind of mindful of how we've all been through a week in the news where we've seen women taking courageous steps. I know that we come from many different perspectives politically, and perhaps there are different perspectives on Dr. Ford's sharing this week and Kavanaugh's sharing. I'm sure there are a lot of different feelings and thoughts in the room, but just on a basic level, isn't it powerful that the story of Esther comes at a time when a woman takes a step that is courageous at the very least? Um, and if you don't believe that for any reason, that it's courageous, think about other women that you know who have taken a step to tell their story or women who have gone through something like that and have shared or reported to the police and you get the idea of the kind of courage that I'm talking about today. There are so many who need a voice today or need an advocate today. Women who confront harassment, children who face child abuse, those who are victims, men and women of human trafficking. We could really go on with quite a list. People who are poor, people who are treated differently, perhaps by the justice system because they are poor. So many vulnerable people. And it really does help when people share their stories courageously. It really helps when they speak out and say, this was my experience and it was painful. And so that's the kind of thing that we have witnessed this week. Sharing of painful experience. And so, I happen to resonate with what Senator Leahy said when he said millions of victims and survivors are inspired, Dr. Ford, by your courage. Bravery is contagious. So again, think about an example of bravery and brave sharing. And if that one doesn't work for you for any reason, think of another one. And remember that bravery is contagious and it's powerful. Esther was brave because she drew attention to the fact that she was Jewish and that this edict had been issued that the Jewish people would be killed. So she said, I'm part of that group. These are my people. And she, she did so knowing that the king's response might surprise her. She didn't know for sure how he would, whether he would agree with her or take the side of Hanan, who was in his government. So she was brave, wasn't she? She was also strategic. If we had read earlier in the story, we'd know that she planned a series of meals so that she could sort of work up to this and she could have this intimate setting where Haman and the king were in the same room over a meal. And so it was very strategic when she made this revelation. That reminds us too that as we advocate for other people, we need to be strategic too whether we're part of a movement that's advocating or as an individual, timing can be important, right? And the way we go about things can be important. There are countless biblical accounts that talk about this. The walls of Jericho falling after a certain number of marches around and 
barren women praying and fasting until the timing is just right and God grants them a child. Moses call, there was a, a proper time for that and a time when the people left Egypt with God's help. Everything happens in its time. So Esther had that sense of timing. Esther had that sense of um, courage and it worked together for good. Jesus said to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So that's kind of the idea, isn't it? Calling on God's wisdom and timing, having good, harmless intentions. So um, Mordecai, who's mentioned in the story, was her cousin who raised her. And the other thing she did was she, she knew that um, she was trying to help him, but if she failed, she also knew that he could have ended up on those gallows. She knew that there could have been retaliation. He could have been the first to die, right? And so many times when people speak out, they risk having retaliation. Think about the Sandy Hook families when they spoke out about their views about how to prevent future gun violence, all the death threats that they've gotten and accusations of being paid actors and all kinds of things, right? Same thing happened with the Parkland teens and their families. Um, we see this again and again, that there's a price to be paid for speaking out in many different issues and in many different situations. So Esther was very brave. She knew she was part of a minority and she affirmed that she was part of that minority and she advocated for her people. She did it, not for herself, but for the others. So again, when women speak out about assault or abuse or any kind of injustice, they do it not just for themselves, but for all in a similar situation. So what are some other things that people speak out on that takes bravery? Well, what about corruption in corporations? What about speaking out about destruction of the environment, taking brave witness, putting their bodies out there like in Standing Rock, facing sometimes injury, personal physical injury as well as spiritual emotional injury for being right on the front lines trying to stop an action that would harm the environment. Or what about the women that Dorothy mentioned in PeaceWorks, like Peace Pilgrim, walking around the country with just her motto of peace, her beautiful saying that she had, and she could have been hurt, staying with strangers, accepting food from strangers. She could have been killed. She put herself at risk. Other people that were mentioned in, in her show, like Jeanette Rankin, she wasn't in the majority in her view about the World War. I learned a lot from Dorothy on that. What about people advocating for the rights to vote, like Susan B. Anthony? The bottom line is, anytime someone takes a courageous stand, it helps pave the way for others, but it's not an easy thing to do. So Esther can be a model of courage for us, a model of courage. One thing, though, I'd just like to lift up is that I wrestle with the ending of the story that Haman is hung on the gallows. You may know that as Methodists, we have a position against the death penalty. And it's been a long-standing position. And I imagine that many Jewish folk, as well as Christians, wrestle with, should he have been put to death, or should he have been imprisoned and given a chance to repent of his plan? Because so many of us today, in all different faith communities, believe in restorative justice, rather than simply punitive or taking someone's life. Well, there's something to wrestle with in the story, right? What would have happened if it ended differently? But I have to say, there is a certain amount of satisfaction, right? That he has the gallows for the Jews, and it ends up that he's on the gallows. There's just a certain simplistic kind of satisfaction that the bad guy gets in the end, right? We all can relate to that. We all can relate to that. But I do think God calls us to go deeper and to think about how do we move beyond simply an eye for an eye, and how do we think about how that might have ended differently? If we're using it as a model for today, we would hope that she spoke out, the plan was averted, and Haman somehow was kept from doing harm, but began to learn a different way to think about the Jewish people, a different way to operate. So.
So as we think about this story, think about the people you know. It doesn't have to be women. It can be men, too. The people you know who have made courageous witness. Think about the people you know who have put themselves on the line to help others. And now think about whether you've ever done that. Can you think for a moment of a time when you were like Esther and you stood up for someone else? You stood up for your people? Can you think of a time when you went to someone in power who had more power than you and stood up for what you thought was right? Esther is a model of speaking truth to power as well. Yes, she had a certain amount of power as the queen, but certainly not the power that her husband did. You notice how she approached him, still with some fear and still with some pleading, tearful pleading, which shows that it wasn't a shoe in by any means. So speaking truth to power is important. And sometimes it happens as a group of people, too. It's not always an individual. It can be groups of people in society speaking truth to power, whether it's power in the church, power in the government, power in the local community, wherever you have that power. And that's important. So keep exercising courage and speaking truth to power. Esther was successful. Esther showed us that we can make a difference. Let us pray. Oh God, we lift up Esther today, even as we lift up all people who are vulnerable or who have been harmed, deeply harmed. Lord, we, we weep with Esther for plans in the world that could harm others, plans that are made again and again in so many different circles that cause harm. Yet we know, O oh God, that your light is stronger than anything else, and that you still raise up Esthers, you still raise up men as well who speak truth to power, men who want goodness to prevail in the world, who defend the vulnerable, who advocate courageously. We pray that we might be inspired as we go forth to do the same. Amen. As we take up our collection this morning, our bell choir will be playing another piece for us. We'll be joining.
Please stand now as we dedicate our gifts to God. today with love and praise. We are so glad to be your people, a people in covenant relationship with you. We are so glad to have these ancient texts with the witness of what you have done in the past that shows us what you still want to do in our lives in the present. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that quickens our hearts, leads and guides us, shows us when we've been wrong, moves us in the right direction. Today we thank you for the book of Esther and the portion that was read today. We pray that we will be led to go back and read the whole book and study it and learn more. We thank you, O oh God, for the witness of Jesus who is constantly speaking out bravely to powerful people on behalf of the poor and the dispossessed and the sick, the vulnerable. God, today we lift up all who have suffered injustice or attack on their very person. We lift up all who have suffered abuse we pray for your comfort to be with them. We pray for your empowerment to be with all who have suffered in any way. And Lord, we also pray for open eyes. Open eyes that mean even the eyes of our hearts and our minds. And where we are wrong, that we might see anew, repent, change, turn around. Lord, we lift up also those who need a healing touch today because they are physically ill. We lift first names before you now for those who need your physical healing. <clears throat> Jack. Lord, we lift other names aloud before you, I mean, silently before you. Oh God, now we, we pray for our community and for the world that you would continue to turn it toward greater peace, greater merciful, restorative justice. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.